gonna get started testing today. Now this testing is gonna take a long time, so I'm really kind of anxious to get to it and get started. So if you remember, we had this I Charger 4010, so it can uh, do 10S and uh, 40 amps of current. Today we're going to hook up all the test cables and see exactly what it's going to take to discharge my first set of three cells and start this charging process, get it underway. So one of the things that we made last week where we made some cables here. Now, now these cables uh, are good enough to handle the current. Probably going to be good enough even to discharge 60 amps if we really wanted to do that. Not that you could do that with this charger, but you know, if you wanted to have a monitored discharge, you could probably do all kinds of current through these cables. They fit in between the slots of the battery. Not only that, they have heavy duty banana cables on them. I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Also last week, we talked about some kind of a load. Some kind of a load that would be sufficient enough to load down these battery packs and discharge them and also dissipate all the heat. So this is what I came up with. Uh, I epoxied these resistors that I showed you last week on here and added a whole bunch of fans, hooked them all up in parallel, 12 volt supply, and that way these things will run all the time. And of course they have the same kind of banana plugs, the same kind of cables that my test cables have. So this is going to be handy, especially when discharging my first battery for the first time. So let's get into that. So last week I kind of showed exactly how to test these batteries. Want to make sure and keep a log as well and identify the plus and the minus. I'm always going to standardize and have the plus side down so that way the positive terminal is always going to be lower than the negative terminal no matter what side you're working on here. And we'll introduce our load here. So our load is such that uh, these are 0.1 ohm resistors. The total amount of this here would be 0.1 ohms. The total amount of this here would be 0.1 ohms. And of course you can see these are both in parallel. So the total overall resistance would be 0.05 ohms. So what you want to do when you introduce a load to this thing is you want to make sure that the resistance is greater than the current you're trying to discharge. So in this case if you're trying to discharge you know 30 40 amps you're gonna need to at least have a 0.05 ohm load in order to make sure that this will be able to handle and dissipate all the all the energy. So we'll plug this into the eye charger, one of the ports here. You don't have to worry about polarity with this thing because it, once again, it's just a load. And now to get good contact, I'm going to use something like this. It's a kind of a quick clamp situation where, uh, you know, you pull the trigger and more you pull the trigger and more it squeezes. Uh, it's got a quick release on it. These things are really handy. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to basically just clamp these things onto the battery. Make sure we get a good connection with these and uh, shouldn't really have a problem. Let's hook that up. All right, kind of slide that in there like that. Squeeze that up nice and tight. Another thing is here to remember, you don't want these to be shorting out at all. So the best thing you can do to make sure that doesn't happen is actually just plug it into the eye charger here. We'll take our clamp, cinch it up. I'm going to squeeze this handle a little bit. Probably don't need a whole lot of pressure. In fact, I would recommend just kind of making sure you got good contact because what you don't want to do is you don't want to damage the tabs on the battery. All right, let's get to discharging. Now, as I explained last week, what we're going to do is we're going to take these sets of three that we've identified as being the series batteries. We're going to test the individual sets of three. So there's seven sets of three. So if we were going to discharge the battery into the load, we would discharge it into the load and then use the charger to charge this set of three back up. Now the limitations of this charger is supposed to be 40 amps. When I set it at 40 amps, I got some smoke actually coming out of the vents here. So I'm not really sure why that happened. The thing didn't fail at all, but uh, 
you got smoke coming out of a charger, it's probably not a good thing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this at a rate of 0.5C, which is going to be half of its rated value. So it can discharge and charge at 1C, meaning that if you have a 20 amp battery, you put 20 amps in it, in one hour, it'll be charged. So 0.5C will be around two hours. That's okay. However, it's not okay for the testing, because let's figure that out for a minute. So you have a discharge cycle for two hours. Then you charge it back up at 0.5C. That would be another two hours. So you have four hours per sets of three per set of seven. So let's do the math on that really quickly. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, so that's a lot of time. That's a lot of time that I don't have to spend testing batteries. So what this eye charger can do is it can take energy from this battery and then dump it into another battery. And then what you do is you, uh, when you have a charged cell, then you take that energy and you put it into this battery and you can just kind of walk the terminals up until the battery gets charged. That's great. That's going to cut the time in half. It's exactly what we want. However, you have to start off with a discharge cell in order to charge a cell. So that's where this load comes in. This is all USB updatable and programmable and you can also take, run the USB cable to a computer and with some software that they have that's public domain, you can actually uh, uh, plot a graph of your charge and discharge cycle. It'd be kind of handy if you had something specific where you had a battery that was uh, discharging much too rapidly or maybe not holding energy throughout the charge curve, definitely see that in a graph. So what we're going to do today is we're going to set up a program to discharge a lithium iron phosphate battery, which has certain characteristics in its own, and uh, charge, discharge it at a 30 amp rate. We're also going to have another program to which uh, the load then becomes the battery so that we can take this battery and charge another battery with it. So let's get started discharging that first set of three. Now the first thing you want to do, make sure you're going to dissipate all the heat from this by plugging the fans in. You got all our fans are running. Actually flows quite a bit of air. Now as we'll kick off the program on here. I've made a custom program in this eye charger to specifically discharge at a 30 amp rate. I won't get into how to program this machine. Uh, that's available in the manual. But here's my program here L I F E discharge. So I have two programs I made. I made the regen charge, so it's going to charge from one battery to another. And then this specifies just a load. So depending on what channel you started on, you can see this is blue, and I have this battery here is the blue battery. This here, green, is the load here. So we want discharge on this battery. We'll press enter. Let's go down here to discharge. And then boom, there you go. So you can see what that's doing here is, is uh, it's discharging uh, 16 amps. So now 17 amps. And um, you're just charging exactly 30 amps into this load here. This load's staying nice and cool. So what we'll do, well we'll give it its time. See how long it takes to discharge. There's your time right there. Now this charger won't allow you to go below two and a half volts, which is a safe discharge voltage for a lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's come back when this starts making noise. All right, we're about 25 minutes into the discharge cycle. So these uh, resistors should be at temperature now. I'm gonna take a non-contact temperature probe, kind of see what they are. So the resistors themselves looks like they're about 97 degrees. Now 
the heat sink. It's about 84. Yeah, that's nice and cool. So this load could probably do much more than 30, 30 amps at three and a half volts. Two hours later. Got another battery taken apart. Measured all the voltages on it. Marked where my plus and minus was. We have to have another set of test leads in order to test this other battery. So we'll start at the bottom, which is the plus contact. Hook the test leads up, drain the energy from there into here. All right, now you can see this battery's almost charged. It has a uh, uh, voltage of 3.33 volts. That's at 2.8. So we'll go on this, this channel here. We'll go to this other custom program that I have, which is a charge. We'll set this to discharge. Now what it's going to do is it's gonna, it says wait. What it's going to do is it's going to wait for this battery to start accepting the charge. So you have to turn this side on. Charge. There you go, you can see it's transferring almost all the energy. It's about 30 amps on both sides. So we'll wait until this makes noise again, readjust it, do it again, and again, and again. Well, the alarm went off now, so what we'll do is we'll uh, look at our battery resistance here and we'll record all these numbers onto that spreadsheet. Now we're just going to continue moving these leads from cell groups to cell groups on both sides until we get uh, both of these packs done, change these out, put two new packs in, and start another round. Shouldn't take that long. So the last one's a little bit difficult. Uh, it's not really enough contact area there you just take this terminal off and then just bolt it right to the battery itself. Might have to enlarge the hole in the terminal lug here, but that's okay. Direct connection is always the best whenever possible anyway. So now you can see how much effort this is to test these batteries out. Two hours a cycle takes quite a long time. You do a little math, it's probably going to take me about two weeks to test these batteries. Uh, I suppose your question is, did I find anything? Of course I did. Found something that was definitely incorrect, something that was broken, but you'll have to wait till next week to see that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear one of these packs apart and get inside of there, open it up, and see what we can do about repairing one of these things. Another thing is, is that um, I've had a hard time trying to come across these batteries. I know most of them come out of China, so they're going to need to come out of China. And not only that, they have to have the same specifications as the one that went in the car. So that's going to be a little difficult to source, but I think it's going to be possible. So next week, we'll go into battery repair and then work on getting this whole thing back in the car and take a drive. See if it fixed the problem. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. If you know anybody else that would like this content or anybody who has a Fisker, a Solstice, Firebird, heck, anything I work on, just let them know. Till next time.